Everybody's mad at police now. I watched that. You see that shit on Netflix? The, uh, the making of making a murderer? The Stephen Avery story? Yeah, well, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Stephen Avery is in more trouble than any white person in the history of the United States has ever been in. And a justice system designed for him to thrive, he's failed miserably twice. I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. If making a murder was about a black dude, that shit would be called, duh. <laughs> of course everything can go wrong. Seems like he did it all right. Yeah, the motherfucker even had $200,000 for his legal defense. That should get you off in Wisconsin. That's like OJ money. <laughs> all he needed to get off that he didn't have was a single black juror. That's all it would have took. Because only a black dude in the United States can look at 11 other dudes and be like, I think the police did this shit. He's fucked, he's fucked up in the game. That's how OJ got off. I've been watching that new OJ show. I can't get enough of that shit. Doesn't it bring back good memories? <laughs> but I forgot how, I forgot how, like, just how polarizing that OJ case was. And you know, I've met OJ Simpson on four different occasions in my life. And before the end of the show, I will tell you about each of those occasions. <laughs> the first time I met OJ Simpson, I was in Santa Monica. Santa Monica? Yeah. I can't believe a black dude was like, Santa Monica. <laughs> he was the last niggas I was expecting to say that. Let's see your shoes. You got some vans on, nigga, what you got? <laughs> Santa Monica! <laughs> you? At the time I was 18, I had done a show and then a guy from the club came up and was like, hey, O.J. Simpson's here, and he said he wants to meet you. I said, what? Fuck yeah. I ran down the steps, <laughs> and O.J. was down there, he was like, hey, yo, man, how are you? It's very good to meet you, and uh, you're doing really good work, and I hope good things happen for you in your life. I was like, man, thanks, Mr. Juice. <laughs> Standing beside him, well, I don't know the nice way to say this, uh, his soon-to-be slain wife. Ladies and gentlemen, man the fuck up or you're not gonna make it through the end of this show. Just man the fuck up. She's dead, you already know, we know what happened. We don't know who did it, but we know what happened. I should tell you that woman was very nice to me. She actually embraced me. She said, I think you're adorable. And she hugged me. She goes, good luck to you. And she held me for a long time. And I whispered in her ear, bitch, are you trying to get us both killed? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I didn't say that, but. That was the first time in a nutshell. It's good to see so many, uh, so many different people here from so many different uh, ethnicities. Very diverse crowd. Looks like he thought Bernie Sanders was gonna come out in this motherfucker, but surprise, it's me. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, I'm happy really to see black people come. You know, a lot of black people don't fuck with me like they used to. But there's a lot of reasons, there's a few reasons you don't see black people at my shows. One is because obviously black people have slower internet connections. Um, <laughs> I mean, that would be my guess. I'm just, I don't know what... Actually, my own actions drew a wedge between me and the community I hold so dear. A couple of weeks ago, I was supposed to be in Flint, Michigan for a... Um, for a charity benefit that was supposed to raise awareness for the appalling condition of the water in Flint. I don't know if you know this, but the water in Flint is fucking poisonous. It's actually making people sick. I mean, Hollywood people like, so what? At least they have water. But this water, 
This water's fucked up. So a lot of black celebrities flew into Flint and they did a, 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 a tremendous charity benefit uh, and I was uh, on the schedule to appear. Uh, <laughs> so the reason a lot of people haven't heard about this benefit, it was the same day as the Oscars. Right, I know. So I was on my way to the airport to go to Flint and then Chris Rock calls me and is like, hey Dave, I got a ticket for you for the Oscars. Can you make it? And I was like, sure, nigga, I'm on my way to the airport right now. <laughs> oh, come on, man. What am I going to do about that water? What am I, a fucking superhero? I need to have fun. I need to live too. I didn't fuck that water up. Stevie Wonder was there. They didn't need me. I'm sorry, everybody. I've never been to the Oscars. You've seen the movies I make. I was excited. As I knew I was going to get in some trouble because when I was walking in the red carpet, uh, the black press came after me. Excuse me, brother. You, when you hear somebody call you brother too much, something terrible is about to happen. Excuse me, brother, brother. And then I looked back and the motherfucker had a tuxedo with the kente cloth tie. I said, uh-oh. He said, I just want to ask you a couple questions. I said, well, what publication are you with? He said, me, I'm with the Daily Bongo. I said, Daily Bongo? What the fuck? Who the fuck reads this? He said, listen, brother, I just want to ask you a quick question. Um, you understand that this year, this is a, a, a boycott for the Oscars, so I'm just wondering what made you, of all people, cross the motherfucking picket line and be here tonight. I said, boycott? Nigga, I haven't been working in 10 years. What do you mean, boycott? I've been on strike, y'all niggas didn't stop working. I had to watch fucking Key and Peele do my show every night. Daily Bongo is what I said. I went to Oscars and had a wonderful time. I went to that fucking green room. It was filled with so many stars. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. Hollywood was seducing me all over again. <laughs> I was sitting back there. I'm smoking, drinking with the stars. And then two Hollywood movie producers came over right to me. Oh my God, Dave Chappelle said the leader one. He was obviously gay. Some guys, you can just tell. The other one seemed like a money guy, like maybe he was from Texas or some shit. But the gay one was definitely the leader because he did all the talking. And then he hit me with, so David, um, do you have any movie ideas that you would like to pursue? The truth is, I don't. But if you know the game, you're not supposed to tell motherfuckers you don't have ideas. I was like, yeah, man, I got plenty of ideas. And he called my bluff. Really? Like what? Huh? Oh. Um. Um. And then I just, I just started making up shit that I thought maybe he'd like to see. I said, I have a superhero idea. He goes, really? I go, yeah, he's a, um, he's a gay superhero. He was like, really? What's it called? Huh? Oh, it's called, it's called Same Hero New Boots. It's about a gay sous chef in San Francisco. He gets bit by a radioactive rat on his shift when he's taken out the trash. And he's blessed with powers beyond his wildest dreams. Super sonic gay kind of powers. And he starts saving everybody in San Francisco. But at first, he only saves gay people. Later, he saves everybody. And the whole city just falls in love with him. The only problem is, no one remembers him when he saves him. Well, I don't understand. Why wouldn't they remember him? I said, because, dummy, he's gay. He keeps changing his outfit. People come up, oh, thanks for saving me, mister. What's your name, anyway? And he's like, ugh, same hero, new boots, and that motherfucker flies away. <laughs> he's like, I like it a lot. Texan didn't like that shit at all. He was upset. 
that's impossible, gay superhero. I said, what, well, I have others. I have a superhero you love because he's stronger than Superman and he fights for truth, justice, and the American way like Superman, but more than Superman. He beats up Mexicans for no reason. <laughs> The Texan's like, you got my attention. <laughs> I was like, man, this motherfucker is so strong. He can fly and do all this great shit. Only problem with this guy is he can't even activate his powers unless he touches, unless he touches a woman's vagina. <laughs> Not a long touch, just a couple of pats. <laughs> Michael Jackson has been dead for 10 years and this nigga has two new cases. And if you haven't watched that documentary, uh, then I'm begging you, don't watch it. <laughs> it's fucking gross. I felt like HBO was sticking baby dicks in my ears for four hours straight. <laughs> really nasty shit. I want to know all these things. <laughs> Turns out, uh, Michael Jackson allegedly likes a long gander at the anus. So they said he stares at people's buttholes. That's what they said. That's how gross the documentary was. I'm gonna say something that I'm not allowed to say. But I gotta be real. Uh, I don't believe these motherfuckers. I do not believe it. But, let me qualify the statement. I, I am what's known on the streets as a victim blamer. <laughs> you know what I mean? If somebody come up to me like, Dave, Dave, Chris Brown just beat up Rihanna. I'll be like, well, what did she do? <laughs> Dave, Michael Jackson was molesting children. Well, what were those kids wearing at the time? I don't think he did it. But you know what? Even if he did do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> I know more than half the people in this room have been molested in their lives. But it wasn't no goddamn Michael Jackson, was it? <laughs> Kid got his dick sucked by the king of pop. <laughs> all we get is awkward thanksgivings for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you know how good it must have felt to go to school the next day after that shit? <laughs> hey, Billy, how was the weekend? How was my weekend? <laughs> Michael Jackson sucks my dick. <laughs> And that was my first sexual experience. If I'm starting here, then well, sky's the limit. <laughs> I know it seems harsh, but man, somebody's got to teach these kids. There's no such thing as a free trip to Hawaii. <laughs> He's gonna wanna look at your butthole or something. You know why I don't believe it? You know why I don't believe it? Because if Michael Jackson's out here doing all this molesting, then, then why not Macaulay Culkin, hmm? <laughs> Macaulay Culkin said in an interview that Michael Jackson never did anything inappropriate with him or even around him. Think about that shit. Celebrity hunting season. Doesn't matter what I say, they're gonna get everybody eventually. Like, I, look, I don't think I did anything wrong, but, but we'll see.
They even got poor Kevin Hart. Can you imagine such a thing? Kevin Hart, let me tell you something. It was, it was Kevin Hart's dream to host the Oscars. That's what he told me. And I remember when he told me, because I was thinking to myself, well, that's an awfully strange dream for an African-American. <laughs> kind of nigga dreams of hosting the Oscars. <laughs> Kevin did, that's who. And he did it. Against all the odds, Kevin became the most famous comedian this world has ever seen, and he got the job that only one black man before him had. He was going to host the 80th Oscars. And I don't know what you know about Kevin, but I know Kevin Hart is damn near perfect as close to perfect as anybody I've ever seen. In fact, Kevin is precisely four tweets shy of being perfect. <laughs> 10 years ago, Kevin had made some very homophobic comments. And I'm not gonna repeat what he said, because this is Atlanta. You know what I mean. I'm sure there's a lot of gay men here tonight with their wives. <laughs> Far be it from me to offend anybody. All right, I'll tell you what he said. But just remember, these were not my words. These were Kevin's words. And it was a long time ago. And I'm paraphrasing because I'm not good at telling other people's jokes. Okay, Kevin said <laughs> that if his little son was demonstrating or, or, or exhibiting uh, homosexual behavior around the house, that he'd chastise him. He'd say, hey, that's gay. And then he said he would smash a dollhouse over that child's head. Ooh, the gay community was furious. And I don't blame them. They got a lot of gay friends. And all of them, 100% of them, all have told me fucking horror stories about the shit they had to go through just to be themselves. Crazy, crazy stories. And in all those stories, I gotta say, not one of them has ever mentioned anything like their father smashing a fucking dollhouse <laughs> over their head. Because clearly Kevin was joking. Think about it. You would have to buy this nigga a dollhouse to break it over his head in the first place. Does that sound right? Is anybody going to do that? The gay community was upset, and then they put so much pressure on the Academy of Motion Pictures and Sciences that they went to Kevin and said, if you don't apologize to that community, then you cannot host these Oscars. And then Kevin said, fuck it, I quit. And then he went on every talk show in America and apologized for six weeks. <laughs> Kevin fucked up. I understand the mistake he made because I've made the same mistake early in my career. This is many years ago, 15 years ago. It's when I was doing Chappelle's show. There's a, th thank you, thank you. On network television, they have a department that's called Standards and Practices. This is the department that tells you what you can and cannot say on television. And if you're doing your job well, you should never hear from them. But if you're making Chappelle's show, you'll hear from these motherfuckers all the time. <laughs> and remember, this is 15 years ago. I made a mistake. I didn't even know I had done anything wrong. I had written a sketch that had the word in it. <laughs> so I had to go to standards and practices. They call me up. I don't know why they're calling me, but I like the lady that runs the department. She's usually really fair and was one of my favorite people I've ever worked with. So she sits me down. We have a nice conversation. She tells me, oh, the sketches are great. I go, oh, fantastic. Well, well then why am I here? She said, because David, there's no way that you can ever say the word 
faggot on our network. I didn't know I did anything wrong. I didn't try to defend myself. I said, all right, fuck it, I'll take it out. Have a good afternoon. And as I was leaving, it occurred to me, hey, hey, Renee, quick question. <laughs> it's just a question. I, seriously, I want to know, like, why, why is it, why is it that, that I can say the word nigger with impunity? but I can't say the word faggot. <laughs> and she said, because, David, you are not gay. I said, well, Renee, I'm not a nigger either. Yeah, it's about time somebody let these handicaps have it. <laughs> they done met their match tonight. Fuck them. <laughs> One time I was on Capitol Hill and I seen a handicapped congressman. Madison Cawthorn, that's his name. <laughs> He's a Republican from North Carolina. And, 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 and he was shocked, because I, I saw him, and I, and I go, hello, Congressman. He didn't even know I knew who he was. He turned around. <laughs> then I just walked away. <laughs> I wanted him to see me do something he couldn't do. <laughs> I skipped. <laughs> that nigga was mad. He's no longer a congressman. I don't know if you follow politics. Uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but <laughs> he lost his seat. <laughs> he ran a bad race. <laughs> oh, buddy, yes, he did. And you know what he did wrong? He was running for Congress again, and this motherfucker tried to be controversial. He was on all them right-wing podcasts talking all that shit. He was like, he was like, Washington is... Worse than Hollywood. I was at home like, what? He said, these people are disgusting. They have orgies and sex parties and drug parties. And I was thinking, this nigga sounds like Juicy Smoothie. <laughs> He's lying. Now, I don't doubt that they do this kind of shit in Washington. But I doubt he's seen it with his own eyes. <laughs> because who the fuck invites a paraplegic to an orgy? so this nigga can roll around and snitch on everybody. <laughs> I said, there's only one reason you're gonna invite him to an orgy. And you know what that is. Have at it, guys, I can't feel anything. <laughs> Let's get this bill passed for America. One at a time, folks. Oh, buddy. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, the handicaps are the new people I punched down on. To be honest with you, I've been trying to repair my relationship with the transgender community because I don't want them to think that I don't like them. And you know how I've been repairing it? Uh, I wrote a play. I did, because I know that gays love plays. <laughs> It's a very sad play, but it's, it's moving. It's about a black transgender woman whose pronoun is sadly nigger. <laughs> it's a tearjerker. At the end of the play, she dies of loneliness because white liberals don't know how to speak to her. Sad. Speaking of nigger, I've also been working on a book, and this is true. I'm rewriting the American classic, Huckleberry Finn, from Nigger Jim's perspective. It's called The Adventures of Nigger Jim. That's how the book starts. Huckleberry Finn walks up to him and goes, so you're Nigger Jim. And he's like, yo, I just said Jim. What's your name, little buddy? 
Huckleberry Finn is my name. What? Huckleberry? That's your, your real name? God given. You know what? Just call me Nigger Jim. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care if you are black or white or whatever. If you ever meet a white person named Huckleberry, he has less money than you. That is the white trashiest name I've ever heard in my fucking life. If you have a name like Huckleberry, you're doomed to fail. If I was in court and my lawyer came up and was like, I am your attorney, Huckleberry Finn, I'd be like, uh oh, I'm going to jail. God forbid I ever go to jail. But if I do, I hope it's in California. Because as soon as the judge sends me, I'll be like, Your Honor, before you sentence me, I just want the court to know I identify as a woman. <laughs> Send me to woman's jail. <laughs> and as soon as I get in there, you know what I'm going to be doing? Give me a fruit cocktail, bitch, before I knock your motherfucking teeth out. I'm a girl just like you, bitch. Come over here and suck this girl dick I got. Don't make me explain myself. I'm a girl. <laughs> November 2003. I'm a junior in college at NYU. I'd been doing stand-up maybe two years, my mom calls me up, she says, Aziz, are you coming home for Thanksgiving? And I said, Ma, you know the money I set aside to come home for Thanksgiving, there's been a change of plan. Dave Chappelle is doing some shows in San Francisco at the Punchline, and I gotta go see that. And she's like, who is Dave Chappelle? I said, he's maybe the greatest comedian alive. She says, is that the guy that goes, I'm Rick James, bitch? <laughs> And I said, yes. She said, he's hilarious, have a good time. And I went to those shows, I saw all, it was like six shows that he did at the Punchline, and these were those Dave Club shows where he did, you know, really long sets that went to like four or five in the morning, and, and they were hilarious, and they were thought-provoking, and, and it was incredible. And since then, uh, I've gotten to know Dave as a friend, we've, we've done shows together. Beyond <laughs>
if you leave him in the backyard too long, he'd be complaining, be like, oh shit, son, I need somebody to come back here. Nobody feeds me. Ow! Yeah, the jacket is fresh as fuck. Oh! Fucking my bro. How are you? I'm going to piss. It looks like you just got back from beating up motherfuckers. <laughs> First time anyone ever brought me on stage, a guy named J.T. Newton. I don't even know, is J.T. alive? Seriously. He lives in Long Island. Well, that's good news. <laughs> you ever think a nigga was dead, but he just lived in Long Island? <laughs> I went to a comedy club with my very best friend. We're still friends to this day. We showed up early, it was five o'clock. Back in those days, all you had to do to be a comedian was show up early enough to sign the list. It was 20 spots. I came right after school. I picked seven. My best friend at the time picked the fifth. He bombed. <laughs> he didn't make it. <laughs> JT introduced me. He said, folks, everybody's gotta start somewhere and tonight, this young man is starting here. I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, you might be witnessing the birth of a star. Please welcome Dave Chappell. <laughs> I went by myself, but by the time I went on, my mother, who was here tonight, and her mother, who is no longer with us, showed up. I bet you not to come. Oh, I beg him not to come. I said, the only way I can handle this is to confront it. So I went to my grandmother and I said, listen, Nana, um, listen, I'm going to say some things tonight that you have never heard me say. And mom, you'll appreciate this. Do you remember what your mother said to me? She said, I've heard worse. No. She said, baby, do this shit. I guess what I'm trying to say to you, Mom, not only thank you, but I told you so. There are times when you need someone. Yeah, Dad. We love you, brother. Yes. There is a light that shines. Yeah. I never knew a la, 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 a la like this. Gotta be something for me to write this. Queen, I ain't seen you in a minute. Wrote this letter and finally decide to send it. Sign, seal, deliver for us to grow together. Love has no limit. Let's spin a slow forever. Your heart is weathered by what studs did to you. I ain't gonna salt them. I did it too. Cause of you feelings I handle with care. Brothers recognize your life. They can't handle the glare. Hey, I ain't the type to walk around with matches. Search a relationship is effort. I match with work. Be the one that make you happiest. Hurt you the most. The end is near. Come close to the, what? to the most high. Regardless of what happened on him, let's rely. Yeah, yeah. When you need someone, say what? Come on. I will be by your side. Yeah, oh, let them know about the light, y'all. Come on. There is a light that shines. It shines so special for you. Ah, uh, yeah, me. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tick a da, tick a da, tick a tick a da da. Tick a da, tick a da, tick a tick a da da. Tick a da, tick a da, tick a tick a da da. Yo, I tell you the rest when I see you. Peace, Dave. You the greatest, baby. We love you, man. The greatest, brother. A beacon of light. <laughs>